In this next general report writer training module, we're going to be looking at grouping, subtotals, and totals. At the end of this module, you're going to be able to do two things. First, you're going to be able to update your report application to include subtotals and totals in the report data stream, in that XML data stream that is being sent from the report application to the general report engine. Second thing you're going to be able to do is add those subtotals and totals that are included as part of this data stream to a report and add them in logical places using logical containers. In this presentation, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can modify your report application so that the totals and subtotals are being sent across in the XML data stream. In this first method, we're going to modify a report block. And when we modify the report block, one of the first things we do is we add variables to our definition. So we're going to define a store total, an order total, and a report total. Here I'm defining them as decimals 10, 2. You would, of course, use the data type that's applicable for your application. Further down in that report block, we can start in our format, start having before group. So here, before group of data.orders.storeNum, I want to print data.orders.storeNum. Here in the before group of datas.orders.storeNum, I print datas.orders.storeNum. The reason I'm printing this out is often when you're doing any sort of grouping, you want to have an introduction before the rows are printed out so that you would have a label or you would have a, a line that says store number 101. Then you have the details for store 101. And at the end, you would have store 101's total. So in this report block, I'm adding my before groups so that I capture the store number of the rows that are going to be following. I capture the order number of the rows that are going to be following. On every row, I print out the data row. And now my after group. So after the group of data.orders.orderNum, after when my order number is changing, I'm going to let the order total equal to the group sum of my items dot quantity times my data dot items dot price rather than accumulate on every row i'm waiting until my order number changes and then i'm using this group sum to go and summarize what the total is for that group and after i do my group sum, my next thing would be to print the order total out likewise with the store number after the group of data dot orders dot store num i have to let my store total equal to the group sum of the quantity times price, and then I want to print out the store total. When all is said and done, on last row, I want to let my report total equal to the sum of the quantity of price for all the rows. So instead of doing a group sum for my report total, I'm just doing a sum on that report total. And I would print out the report total and then have the end report to end the report block. This is the first method of gathering totals and subtotals and sending them across. And now I'm going to take you through the second method of accomplishing basically the same thing, getting those subtotals and totals to stream across with your XML data stream. Again, I have a report block. And in that report block, I'm still defining my store total, my order total, and my report total. However, this time I'm also defining an item total. And the item total I'm also making is a decimal 10, 2. My order external by doesn't change. It's still going to order it by store num and then order num. However, now when I get into my format block, what I want to do is before I start the report, I'm going to let the report total equal to zero. I'm going to initialize it to zero. Before group of store number, every time the store number changes, I'm going to reset the store total to equal to zero. And then every time the order number changes, I'm going to reset the order total equal to zero. Why am I doing this? Well, when it comes time to work with on every row, every time a row of data arrives, I'm going to let the item total equal to the quantity times price. I'm going to let the order total equal to the current order total plus the item total. I'll let the store total equal to the current store total plus item total. And I'm going to let the report total equal to the current report total times item total. And so what we're doing here is on every row, we're accumulating. When we're Done, then we print data type star, so we print out our data row, and then we are also going to send across on every row the item total, the order total, the store total, and the report total. Some of the tips we have for coding. When you're 
writing your 4GL report application, we would prefer that you calculate the values inside of that report program block. Instead of sending your data stream across and calculating the values in the report design document. Now I could theoretically in my report design document, take the price times the quantity, multiply them together and produce an item total. However, it's better if you use the power of the DVM to calculate the values in your report application prior to sending the data across to your report design. We also recommend that you use fields over expressions to hold these report values and you create and name variables to store the results. And naming the variables make it Naming the variables makes it much easier to access that variable in the report design document. For example, in our code snippet here, we say let item price equal to amount times unit price. When we send across the print statement, we're sending across the item price and the data. But because we've named it item price, we've given it such a clear name, it's easy to select that from our data view once we import our RDD. In your 4GL application, we ask that you restrict your use of control blocks for your reporting application to first page header, before group of, on every row, after group of, and on last row. The on every row is the only block that's required. However, you can use any of these five control blocks when you're creating your report application. One of the decisions you may have to make is where you want your totals to be printed on the page. And the question that's often asked is, do you want your totals printed floating at the end of the detail or do you want them printed at a fixed position on each page? The solution to your total positioning issue is to, first, you can calculate your totals in either method. I could either use an after group clause and use my group sum, or I can calculate them as running totals in the on every row. When it comes time to position, it's really preference. If you want to position your totals after the detail, you'll put in a mini page or a stripe, and you'll leave the Y property blank. If you want to position the totals in a fixed position, you can, can create that same stripe. This time, however, you set your Y property equal to max minus a value, such as 30 millimeters. By doing this, you're saying, I want to go to the bottom of the page, the maximum of the page, and then go up 30 millimeters. Now, I'm assuming here that you've placed a stripe on your report, and you've then placed the total in the stripe. I'm sure you could also do this by editing the X property of the totals itself and have the total free floating on that page. Under some systems like invoices and purchase orders, you may have the value stored in the header record, which is typical for invoice and purchase order data. In these situations, you can get the total or you can calculate the total in the before group before you've processed the rows. This allows you to print the total on the very first page. You could also run a separate select in the before group, effectively doing a multiple pass through the database if you want to have the total prior to going in and working with your report. And again, the only reason that you would want to do these is if your goal is to have the total print before you print out the detail rows. This ends our presentation on grouping totals and subtotals. If you have lab exercise material with you, you may want to go now and go and complete the lab for the grouping totals and subtotals for module five. If you don't have access to a general report writer or you don't have the lab exercises, feel free to watch the video recording of the labs.